Hello, everybody. Welcome to a, another round of TBR Mini Star Hop. I am going to be playing it for the next 48 hours, and I am really looking forward to this. I know that my last two that I did were the first two I did after school, but this is the first one that I am doing after I have completed my boards exam, which I am beyond excited about that I finally took it, I passed it, I'm done. So I can just enjoy this weekend without feeling guilty and thinking that I should be studying. So I'm actually hoping that the board is kind of mean to me. I don't want it to be like mean giving me books over 500 pages and mean giving me like 10 books, but one or the other I would be happy with. I'm hoping to get some of the books from my TBR read because I haven't really read any of them yet this month since I've been studying. So yes, I have some big hopes and expectations from this board. We'll see what it does. I am gonna of course be playing with my Patreon, so we're gonna be jumping onto sprints in like 10 minutes. I'm actually on top of my filming this opening segment and not filming it like the second before I start sprints. So yeah, really excited to jump into this. I think this is going to be like a really fun round just because I can actually enjoy it again. It's been so long, I'm really excited. Whew, let's get going with the first roll of the game. See if they, we, they give us a black hole. I feel like this first one always seems to get us, so. Ooh! It went, it might've gone out of frame, I couldn't tell, but it's a five, which is kind of the best case scenario. I'm excited, let's go see what prompt we get. Okay, we got a moon, we got five. This was like best case scenario roll that we could have gotten. Let's go ahead, let us spin, see what we get. I was gonna go in and edit the prompts and I might do it like in between the spins, I didn't get to it, but I feel like I'm okay, I'm okay with all the picks on this one, so. Let's see what we get. Gotta turn up my volume a little bit so we can hear the spinner wheel. Okay. Are you kidding me? You gotta be kidding me. How does this happen every time? A book over 400 pages. I just, I really should just accept that this is gonna happen every time. Okay, I will go get some options and I'll be back. Okay, I have some options and I'm not gonna lie, one of them I picked and I legitimately, while I was grabbing it, I was like, this is a, like, yeah, this could be an option, but um, it very quickly unbecame an option, so I'll show you, but it's, it's no longer in my running and that is Crescent City 3. This is on my TBR for the month, so I do want to read it and I would love if I could get it in during this readathon, but it's like 900 pages or something like that, so I really should not uh, be picking that as my first one. Probably just setting myself up for failure by doing that. So that one's already out, but I had to show you because like five minutes ago, me thought that that was a smart book to pick off the shelf. Uh, I also have Red Sister by Mark Lawrence. I am already a little bit into this one, uh, so it would be a little bit shorter, but I am doing a vlog of myself reading this, so I just don't know if I should pick it for this readathon or not, because then I'd be like having it in two different videos while I'm like kind of vlogging it. I don't know, it might be weird. Maybe it's just in my head. I also have Daughter of No Worlds. This is on my official TBR for the month and I have already started it, but I'm not very far into it and I am really enjoying it so far. So I would not be like, this would be a really good pick. It seems like a book that would be really fast read and it's fantasy romance, but it's just really intriguing and pulling me in. So I would love to pick this one. Um, I also have Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa. This one is the buddy read, the group book read, whatever you want to call it, for a readathon that I am co-hosting this month, the Spring Into Reading Readathon. And this is our like group read. And so I definitely want to read it this month. And it is, according to Goodreads, like about 450 pages. So it definitely counts. And I have the audiobook and ebook from my library, so I could do both. So that one's a definite contender as well. I think as of right now, I'm between this one and Shadow of the Fox. I feel like this one would just be a really fun read and I would really enjoy it a lot. And Shadow of the Fox is YA, so again, I think this would be a really easy read, easy to get into, and I've heard people really enjoy it. It has like a four star rating on Goodreads, so it's pretty high. And then I will have read it for the readathon, which is very important. I'm going to be doing a live show with the author, so I definitely want to have read the book. Plus, I'm intrigued, like I'm interested to see what it's like, because a lot of people have said they really enjoy it. 
And I think, you know, I think I'm going to go with Shadow of the Fox. I feel like it's just a really smart pick and it will be an easy read. It's not like it's shorter or anything, but I just feel like this is one that'll be easy to binge for the readathon. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go with Shadow of the Fox. I am really excited. I'll be back. It's probably going to take me till close to midnight to finish this. So hopefully I will see you again tonight with an update. Okay, so it is just after midnight, it's about 12.15, and I have finished Shadow of the Fox. I felt like this book had a lot of, like, it was like very hit or miss. There was a lot about it that I really enjoyed. I liked the basic premise of it. I thought it was a really interesting story. I liked the ending. I feel like... There's one character in particular that I'm very intrigued by, and I, it's like obviously intentional, right? They were written that way. Uh, so I definitely am intrigued by that one particular character, but honestly, other than that, I'm not really that invested in many of the others. I guess there's two. There's two characters that I am fairly intrigued by, but the rest of them I'm not in our kind of main, main character, who is the young fox girl, is not exactly my favorite like she's fine but I just I don't really feel much attachment to her and I think that's probably a big issue with it is I think like we're supposed to we're supposed to really like her so I guess just kind of like tell you what this book is about so this is a YA fantasy it is I believe Japanese inspired yes Japanese um because they say ar arigato a lot in the book so that's what's making me think it's Japanese. I could be wrong though so I'm very sorry if I am but it she is a half human half like magical fox called a kitsune and she was raised by these monks and the um monastery is attacked and she has to flee with this demon killer. So we kind of get the perspective of her and the demon killer and also um this really really bad person. So those are our three main points of view. And it's very much a quest story. Like we're moving, we're traveling. There is like the journey to get to the point. You're picking up different people along the way. It almost felt like a little bit like the Wizard of Oz, right? Where you like pick up different people members of your group along the way and they each have their different things they contribute. I don't know. That's kind of the vibes that I got from it. It definitely had a little bit of a middle grade vibe to it where you'd kind of go from one little thing that you had to overcome and conquer to the next one to the next one. It's like you have your little obstacles to your quest along the way. And it was kind of weird to because it felt kind of middle grade-esque in the style of it and the writing. But then every once in a while things would happen that were like definitely not middle grade. And so it felt a little jarring. I don't know if that was just me, my opinions, my thoughts on it. Uh, but that's kind of the way I felt as I was reading it. But that is one book down for the readathon. We are a little bit over six hours into it. So let's jump into the second roll. <sighs> Fingers crossed that it's nice to me. I really don't want to go back to the beginning. Honestly, I feel like now that I'm a solid book into it, I kind of want to be able to keep going. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, so we don't want a one or a six. Anything else we would be fine with. A four. Ooh, that is a sun, which can give some pretty, um, pretty mean prompts, but I think we'll be okay. I think we're good. Okay, we got a sun, which is not ideal, but there are, there is a free pick on there. Friend pick, honestly, I probably would have my husband pick uh, because it's midnight and my friends are asleep. And I don't really, obviously don't want to book over 500 pages. TBR vet would be fine. Continuation would be fine. But honestly, I kind of want free pick or, ooh, ugh. I, yeah, I guess free pick is the one that I want. I, I don't really want any of the others. Okay, let's spin, see what we get.
friend pick, which is becoming husband pick. You know what? That's fine. That's fine. I bet that he's pretty tired right now, so he's probably going to take it easy on me. Okay, I am going to grab a stack because he usually likes me to give him options. So I'm going to grab a stack of options and we'll see what he picks. <laughs> okay, so I asked my husband how many options he wanted. He said three. So I brought them to him and honestly, I like lifted up my first option to kind of walk him through it. And he's like, that's the one I pick. Um, which was The Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin, which I am actually really excited that he picked this one. This was a niece pick for my regular TBR, and I just really like this under the dust jacket art or naked hardcover art. I think it's so pretty. I got this book on like my birthday trip a couple years ago in 2021, yes. And I just am excited to read it. I, I'm hoping for some nice, like cozy fantasy vibes. I actually don't know what to expect from this book. I think it has like elemental magic, but other than that, I really don't know. And the other options that I was going to give him that I didn't quite get to were Daughter of No World and Crescent City 3. Yes, I did give him the option of the super, super long one. This was a dangerous thing to put in there, but he was nice to me and he picked, I think the shortest one. Yeah, that one's shorter than the other, so. He tends to do that. He's very nice to me. So we are going to get started on The Nature of Witches. I don't know how much of it I'm going to get in tonight, but I definitely want to get a decent chunk of it read this evening because I still have one black hole ahead of me on the board and there's a chance I could hit it. So I want to get a good chunk of it read this evening and then probably finish it tomorrow morning and do another roll before my sprints start. So that is the goal. We shall see. It doesn't seem like it should be that long of a read. So we'll see how long it takes me. Okay, so it is, ooh, what time is it? It's about one o'clock in the afternoon and I have finished The Nature of Witches. This was the second book of the readathon and I am not gonna lie to you, this was not my absolute favorite. I felt like I had so many issues with like the morality of what was going on and like the legality of some of these things. So this book follows a young girl. She's 16 or 17 at the beginning. I think she's 16 right at the beginning, but by the end, older. Um, well, like 18, not that much older. And she is a witch, but she's a witch that can control the power of all of the seasons, whereas most witches only have one season, like summer, spring, winter, you know. And so she is a great asset to them because she's needed to help this severe environmental damage that has been done to the world. But she struggles to control her magic and can be really dangerous. And it actually has like killed people who are close to her, like her parents and her best friend. This isn't spoilers, like this happened before the book started. So she is like very nervous about using her power. She's really scared about getting close to people. And it's almost like it's encouraged for her to isolate, but they want her magic. They want to be able to use her because of the power that she has. And there are like, there's, it's pretty much like child abuse, like, it's emotionally abusive to this poor girl. There's actually some like physical abuse that's going on here at points. There's definitely an illegal thing that one of this person does that almost kills. And I am sure very much damages other people that were just like innocent bystanders. Like some of the things in here are absolutely insane. It's like, there's no consequences for the people that do them where I'm like, you are in Pennsylvania. We have laws, like that person should at the very least be fired, but in all reality, we'll probably be going to jail for like kidnapping and torture. So like, th I, it's just crazy to me how these things are meant to be normal. And she's so scared of hurting people closer. And I think it's very fair and valid. Like they're not addressing like, her emotional state like this girl should be in therapy they should be working with her mental health but they'll like say things to her like what if her one of the people is like your woe is me i'm so powerful garbage is getting old like i am sorry have you accidentally killed your parents and best friend because that's pretty traumatizing and then like where there's an i i i'm 
marked multiple of these because I just think it's absolutely insane how terribly they like address the fact that this girl has been through like emotional turmoil throughout her life that is devastating to a normal person. And then this part in here where it's like, I don't believe that walking away makes you brave or selfless or some kind of martyr the way you think it does. I think it makes you selfish, defeatist, and weak. I'm like, I don't know how any 16 year old would be able to deal with that, especially with people around her telling her she's selfish. She should be grateful for the power that she has and that she's not putting in the work and the effort and that she's not taking into account that her power is so special. I'm like, you guys only care about her power and this is why it's not, I don't know. So it's like, it drove me absolutely nuts that these things were allowed and almost like written as if this was an appropriate way to view this poor young girl. But anyways, I really did love uh, Mr. Hart, by the way, I love him. He is, I legit almost cried at some points because I love him. Um, I really enjoyed the love interest in this book. I thought he was very sweet. It, there were a couple points where he as well had a little bit of those attitudes too, and it was I didn't like it, but overall really, really liked him as a character. And I did in general like our main character. I just felt like it was like almost had the attitude of she had to do these things where I'm like, this isn't like you're a slave or you're like in a military school or you have no other option or you really want it, right? These are reasons to maybe push through. None of these things, like why is this girl just accepting this, it was very bizarre to me. So anyways, um, overall, I didn't absolutely love it, but I have finished. And now we are on to the third roll. Fingers crossed that we don't hit the black hole. If we get anything bigger than a two, we are past it. And we're like in the safe zone of the game. Okay, here we go. Like I said, we don't want a two. Anything bigger than a two would be great, but honestly, if we could get a six and be at the end, that would be kind of cool. Okay, here we go. A one. A one? Oh my goodness. That is irritating. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Let's go see what our prompt is. I mean, it's not a two, so I'm not completely mad about it, but not gonna lie, it would have been nice to be past that black hole. It's fine though. Uh, we did land on a star and the stars have the easiest prompts, so hopefully it'll be nice to me. That That's my, my hope, is that it'll at least be a little bit nice to me. I'm gonna change the speed or the length of the spin because I feel like I've been getting a lot of the same ones, so hopefully this will help me to get a different one. Okay, let us see what we get. Oh, I think I gotta turn the volume up. Oh, we're good, okay. Yes, yes, yeah, come on, stay there. Yes, it is a free pick. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, I am going to go and grab some options. I'll be back. Okay, so I have my options. I only brought three. Uh, one of my options is Laura Olympus, the next volume in it. I don't own it physically, but I would just read it on Webtoons and I would look up like which volumes are included in the next volume that I haven't read yet. So that is an option. It'd be nice and easy just because I do still have that black hole in front of us and I don't want to pick something necessarily and then hit it. I don't know, like I'm a little worried about it. I also have Servant Mage. This is a novella that I found. Um, and so I was like, this is definitely a possibility to be a quicker read. Plus it's fantasy. It looks entertaining. It looks like it has dragons. I love that. And then of course, Daughter of No Worlds is on here because Daughter of World No Worlds is apparently always on here. And this one would be really nice to get through because it is actually on my TBR for the month. But this would be kind of a little bit of a risk because if I did hit the black hole after this, I would kind of probably be in trouble because I probably wouldn't be finishing this till like seven or eight tonight. Um, I did look this up and I, the audio audiobook used to be on Everand and it is no longer there or Scribd, whatever you call it. And it's no longer there. So I think I'm gonna put this one off just because I do better when I have an audiobook if I'm reading a book so I can focus, especially when I've been reading this much. You know, I think I'm gonna go with Laura Olympus. I think I'm gonna go with the next volume in it. I'm gonna be safe. I'm going to make sure I'm in a good spot to like finish out the game. And if I have 
a black hole come up and like happen, I will be able to maybe still win the game. That's what we're gonna go with. That's the choice. Laura Olympus, I'll see you back soon. Okay, so it is now 3.30. I did take a break and have some lunch in there, but I have finished the next volume of Lore Olympus, and honestly, I quite enjoyed it. I thought this was probably one of the more intriguing ones. I was interested. I was kind of invested in the little mystery that was going on, and I just felt like the characters were more enjoyable in this one than they have been in some of the past ones and like the focus of the story I liked better. So yeah, overall, I quite had a good time with it. If you don't know what Lore Olympus is, this is a graphic novel series that is a Hades and Persephone retelling. I really like the art style. I think the colors are really vibrant and pretty. And just overall, it was a fun time and it was quick. Well, I would have liked it to be maybe a little quicker, but I did have lunch and watch an episode of The Big Bang Theory in there, which is the show that I'm currently binging. So that was a little bit on me as well. But we're gonna jump into the next roll and honestly, fingers crossed for anything but a one. Literally anything. I will take any number but a one. We could even get another, a two. I'm fine with that, but just not another one. Ooh, okay. Okay, here we go. Oh, that little black hole there is just staring at me. I need to get past it and be safe. Six! Of course, now we get a six. Boom. Okay, we are on the final spot. It's a free pick. Oh, I am so excited. I think this is kind of the best thing because we all know what I'm going to pick. Okay, I am kind of wishing we would have got a six before. I'm actually kind of wishing I would have chosen a different book for my free pick for the last one because I clearly did not need to choose a graphic novel. But we are now on the final spot, which is a free pick. I get to pick whatever I want to read. And I don't think this is going to come as a surprise to literally any of you, but I am going to go with Crescent City Book Three. And this is going to be the final book of the readathon. Let me see how many pages this actually is. Why are these pages not numbered? What is going on here? Okay, so this is like a bonus chapter that's in the book because I did get the Barnes and Noble exclusive edition. I went to the midnight release party for this, which I haven't done a midnight release party in a long time. So it was really fun to be able to go to that even though I'm not as in to Sarah J Mass as maybe some other people are, but there are 835 pages in this book. So we're gonna jump into this. We're gonna see how long this takes me to read it and I'm really excited that this is going to be knocked out during a readathon. I quite enjoy binging really thick books as my final like challenge of the readathon. So this one is going on here and I feel like it was oddly nice to me. For some reason, I feel like when games are nice to me, like even my big game or this little one, I kind of feel like they're like saving up their meanness for the next round. So I'm kind of a little bit nervous for my regular monthly game because I feel like it has both games have been nice to me lately, and so they're probably saving up. Okay, so it is now about four o'clock, and I have finished. So I finished this readathon at two hours before I needed to, and I feel like I could have finished it earlier. I had some time this morning that I could have read and probably finished the book before the sprints with my Patreons even started, but when I have that kind of time, I am kind of lazy about it and I will just kind of put things off because I'm like oh I know I have enough time but I still finished two hours early which I'm happy about so I finished Crescent City book three and I don't think this is going to come as a surprise to anybody who's really kind of been watching my journey reading Sarah J Mass that I did not love this book this was fine I found some of the things intriguing. I do tend to like finding out backstory on worlds and connections and those types of things. So that was interesting for me, but the characters in this were very weak for me. I didn't really feel connection to almost any of them. And some of them I really just was super annoyed with, particularly our main character, Bryce. She drove me nuts. I feel like Bryce, Therian, and um, Ethan were just, all so irritating for me, but particularly Bryce. She had that attitude that I really don't like. It was almost like a patronizing attitude that if people weren't 100% with every single thing that she was doing, she was so annoyed with them and she felt like they weren't really on her side and she just didn't take other people's like feelings and the way they 
viewed things into account whatsoever. Like she was just like, it was her way or the highway. And that definitely bugs me a lot in books, particularly in books where they try to make out this main character to be so smart and just so good at manipulating things and getting like, figuring out how to like get everything the way she wanted it to be. And really, I have seen Sarah J Maas do it so much better in other books, particularly the Throne of Glass series. But in this one, it just felt like a lot of plot conveniences, things that didn't really make sense. And it didn't really make sense that Bryce would be this good and knowledgeable about literally everything this quickly and without any kind of explanation as to why she knew that all of these things would work. You know, like I feel like, especially in Throne of Glass particularly, I know I compare this one to Throne of Glass a lot, but there are so many parallels to it, is I, I just feel like Throne of Glass had it done so much better. Like the main character, there was so much reasons behind things and it gave us so much insight into how and why she did things and this one, just didn't feel that way. It just felt like almost lazy writing where like, well, this is gonna work because Bryce said it was gonna work. And I'm like, okay. And the ending, like can Sarah J Mass not write any other endings? Like, does she not know how to do anything else? Like the, the stakes in this book are in the ground. They're on the floor. I felt no emotion about any of it just because I know how Sarah J Mass writes and I was correct. So it just kind of validated my lack of emotions about these things. Honestly, I just don't really like how a lot of them kind of talk. It's almost like they're trying too hard to be bad. And like, I'm not like these uppity preppy people. Like I am cool and I'm young and hip been like and that's how it felt and I know me saying that even feels that way but like reading it that's how it felt it was so cringe at so many points and I just couldn't I could not get with this book I will say some a lot of my theories were correct like tons and tons of them and a lot of the way things turned out I definitely was not surprised but yeah it's kind of where I got with this one. It it was not my favorite. And honestly, I feel like I'm probably done reading Sarah J Mass at this point. I gave a ton of chances. For me, with her series, I'd say Akatar, and then this one, which is saying something, and then Throne of Glass. Throne of Glass, I probably would reread. I actually quite enjoyed that one okay, but no. No, no. <laughs> which is sad, because look how gorgeous this cover is. Like, it is so stunning. I think all the covers for the um, what, Crescent City books are absolutely gorgeous. But I finished. I've won the readathon. Here are the books that I read. And I put, I put my phone and my Kindle on here to remind me of the other ones that I read. So I have Shadow of the Fox for a book over 400 pages. I have The Nature of Witches for a friend pick, which I had my husband pick. Add Laura Olympus for a free pick, and then Crescent City, House of Flame, and Shadow for a free pick, the final pick of the game. And I know it doesn't look like a whole ton, but there are two other books <laughs> stacked on top here that are represented by my phone and my Kindle. So it was a decent reading weekend, honestly. Uh, Shadow of the Fox is like a nice solid length book. It's over 400 pages, right? This one obviously is really long. This one's like a normal size book, and then Laura Olympus was a graphic novel, so. But yeah, overall, I felt like it was a really good weekend. I had so much fun and it really felt like felt like this readathon went quickly. I kind of just blew through it. I didn't feel like it was dragging at all. I was super just excited about it the entire time. I also got a decent amount of sleep during it, which I don't always do. So that might help with um, my attitude as well. But it was just such a good weekend and I loved it. I had so much fun with it. My patrons were so fun too. We had some really fun, great discussions during the chats. And so it was it was just overall such a fun weekend. I was really glad to be able to do this after all the stress with school and my tests and stuff. So yeah, this was just, this is an awesome weekend, even though the books that I read were kind of all mid for me or even a little bit below mid if you uh, count Crescent City 3. So yeah, it, the books are mediocre, but the weekend was fun. Make of that what you will. But thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate you all so much and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.